The story starts with a call I received when returning home from a wild turkey hunt. I had just been informed that I had just won a drawing for a safari to South Africa. So South Africa, here I come. I was fortunate to attend Wade's first safari course. The course covered a variety of topics from pearls and pitfalls to various types of game animals to types of safaris to best places to go to selecting rifles and cartridges to safe travel. Traveling with firearms, filling out your SAPS 520 forms, tipping camp staff. He also provided four gigabytes of additional videos, references, articles, and important information. Then there was the practical shooting course that he ran me through. We spent many weekends at the range shooting from practical positions and under stress. We finally decided that a Plains Gain Safari, my super grade Model 70, and 180 grain 30-06 Federal Fusion bullets would be an appropriate choice. We discussed travel pearls and pitfalls. Finally, with his advice, I rearranged my flights for a more efficient transit. The flight went off without a hitch with more than 70 movies that he loaded on my iPad and the net collar that he recommended which allowed me to sleep upright. I made it through the 24-hour flying ordeal. I cleared South African Customs in the SAP's office with no problem. I overnighted at the Afton House before connecting on a flight to Petersburg. Hello, Ken what Cook here, say? South Africa with my main peeps, B Swift, B Swifty. Cannot believe I made it to the other side of the world to see this guy. My awesome. longtime best friend from way back in the day. Thank the Lord. Divine intervention. The safari took place on the 30,000 acre Van Amstel family farm. Here are some views of the camps that we stayed at. The primary camp had beautiful grounds, comfortable accommodations, substantial meals, often with the game meat such as the Gemsbuck steak that you're seeing here. We also stayed at another camp on the Limpopo River. As soon as we're done with breakfast, we're off. Alright, sighting in day number one. like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> minutes ago yeah 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 and uh, obviously did the job look at this how beautiful is this absolutely gorgeous out here beautiful Jimmy and Steve put me on this beautiful Impala and um, we stocked up on him a little bit he was underneath the tree and he was about 120 yards away and um, our, our gentlemen behind us get to enjoy him for, uh, for meals this coming week. So um, I'm excited. First one of the, of the hunt. And uh, it's a beautiful time of the night. Look at this. It's, it doesn't get any better. The weather's perfect. So uh, I'm excited. One to the right of them. Another nice pull. That's it, right there. That's it. Oh my gosh, this is 
amazing. <laughs> I can take a pounding guy. Oh my god, the top of Well, the day came earlier than I thought it would. We're only at full day two. And uh, this beautiful, beautiful kudu uh, was about 80 yards. And we had to do a follow up shot on him. But. He is just an old man. He's past his breeding time. He's got some worn tips at the top. And he was away from the rest of the crew. And uh, I just feel extremely blessed. This is exactly what I came to South Africa for. And it delivered. So I thank you, Lord. <laughs> Beautiful. You're gonna help me identify it. Stop. Hey, we're on Jimmy's property, and uh, we weren't successful on the Gemsbuck, um, but we're we're now fortunate to be here, um, and uh, this is the area we saw the huge kudu yesterday night, and. Um, we're going to try to do a stock up to see if we can find him again. So wish us luck. Let's go have a look see, shall we? <laughs> I just hit a massive gems block and we're trying to track it right now. What do you say, Brian? You got a huge bull, my friend. Welcome to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> that is a monster Gemsbug bull. All right, I'm ecstatic. It's our uh, second attempt on uh, Blackie's property. And uh, yesterday we had no luck. We went all morning and we saw a couple and we put some nice stocks on. But uh, came back fresh this morning and lo and behold, within 15 20 minutes we saw a big herd of about 12 and uh, we got the very last one that was just crossing the road he was about 130 yards out and it was a nice uh, heart shot and he went about 40 yards and uh, drops right here in his tracks so I'm ecstatic big beautiful bull gorgeous I am absolutely mind blown at the experience I'm having here. <laughs> so, friends and family, you're coming with me next time. a shot on a water buck that we were not able to get yesterday morning but we just located him. James had an eagle eye, found him over about uh, I don't know, 50 yard. Go. I am absolutely blown away. Look at the animals in South Africa. This is a crazy water buck old man and uh, it was only what Four hours of sleep last night that we went hunting for bush pig. 
which was probably the biggest rush of my life, walking through cornfields in the uh, full moon, and then walking all the way around the cornfield, thinking we don't see anything or hear anything, and then you hear just a boom, boom, crashing, crashing, and it's some big ass bush pig. And uh, we didn't get one, but this whole experience is blowing my mind. I'm halfway across the world right now in South Africa, and let's just say uh, it has not been underwhelming. Uh, words cannot describe what this place is like. It's amazing. After two hours in the blind, an ill-defined mass appeared in the faint moonlight heading towards the bait pile. I nudged Jimmy, waking him, asking him what it was. He confirmed it was a bush pig, and I asked him if I should wait for a bigger one, and he said, no way. If you ever see one, you take them. These guys are whooped. They've been up since 3 a.m. looking for the poachers, and they got skunked. There's probably a pig in here. You'll see the flies. And um, what the poachers will do is they will cover up like this one was an exit. Right. They'll cover it with that logs, and they'll cover another one with the logs, and they will start digging in this one of these ones. And as the pig comes out, they will spear it with spears. And the dogs will, if it runs off, the dogs will bay and they'll kill it. And look at the craziness that we just came across Whoop, today. One of the many blood. days. Don't mind the blood. Big warthog. Brian flew halfway around the world just to go on a killing spree. <laughs> I always knew you had it in you. You're not, you don't break freaking All right, tradition. No. All right. You don't break tradition. Ow. It's the blood of the animal. <laughs> Welcome to Africa, baby. Just shot Brian's wildebeest, walking up to it now. Looks like a very good bull, and he made a good shot at it. We'll go around him and give him another shot, Brian. Just. Well, thanks to James and Steve. Steve. James. <laughs> I got my first wildebeest, and uh, you guys have amazing eyes. I tell you, I can look fully over this thing and not see a damn thing until you guys pin out. Take that one, take that one. So I trust you guys, I thank you. This is awesome, having a blast. Beautiful. Jimmy put me on a how old? Seven, eight year old Impala? It's gorgeous. I uh, was just great size. Um, I'd say he's probably 100, 100 uh, 120. Yeah. And um, we weren't able to get the shot on video because it was uh, through a lot of uh, thick brush and trees. Um, but uh, Jimmy had a good call. He just said, pick that one. <laughs> no questions asked. Just take it. Well, it's the last day of my 10 day stay here with the Nyati Hunts and out with Jimmy and James and this is extremely rare you do not see these during the day it's a caracal and Jimmy spotted him and this is the same cat that we saw I saw last night out of my blind and I actually missed multiple times and it, he was there and it just took one shot it went out lights out quick ethically um, and I'm absolutely blown away. It's just a beautiful cat. Absolutely beautiful cat. And um, 
Jimmy has only taken, this is his second in ever in his life during the day and in his lifetime has only taken four. And so I feel completely blessed and honored uh, to be a part of this with him because I know this is a big part of uh, his culture and uh, just being able to do this in his own land. Um, I'm absolutely humbled and this is going to be memories I'll never forget. And uh, what a way to close out my first ever South Africa hunt. I'm, I'm forever thankful, th thankful for this. Thank you.